Thirsty. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Nintendo Podcast. We are here. We are live. It is Friday. It is podcast day, and it is the best time of the week, right? Because it's Friday, and of course, because of the podcast that you've been waiting all week for this, and now we're here. Thank you so much for being here. We are streaming in more locations than ever, about 25 locations. Like I just lost count where we're streaming. We're streaming on Paul Girl Network. We're streaming on Lily Hyrule. We're streaming on The Odyssey. And we're streaming just basically everywhere. So welcome wherever you are streaming from or watching from. Go ahead and leave that down in the chat so that we can say hello to wherever you're watching us. Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, X. We got Twitch. We got Actually, we're streaming on all platforms. Like even Kick. Even kick, I have uh, crazy, right? So, welcome to the podcast. We are here, and of course, shout out to Joy CJ in the chat, our name topic podcast co host. She is recovering and she'll be hopefully soon with us again, hopefully next week. And uh, Zach is uh, Zach is Zach will pop in any moment now, like a little, like a, like a little balloon popping in at any moment now. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, of course, I'm gonna introduce to you the all-star cast that we have today with us all the way from Hyrule. I think she's, she's, um, I think she's, uh, 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 you know, like a neighbor with, with, uh, with Joycey. Cause I know Joycey is apparently Zelda's mama. 
uh, mm-hmm. L- Lily is from Hyrule. So I'm guessing that Lily is, is kind of related to, to the royal family in some sort of way. Yeah, we are going to be related soon because, yeah, two, uh, you know, uh, two members loving Zelda. That's really I'm liking that. Like, I that yeah. is truly something that I'm looking forward to. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing? And, and, and at the same time, if you've been playing any games you want to share. Yeah, um, thank you. So uh, I've been doing great. Um, I've been playing Crash Bandicoot. Uh, I think that's definitely some other titles. Like, I'm not just uh, crazy for Zelda and action games and stuff like that. I also enjoy a lot of platformers. And I bought the uh, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy a while back. And it has been collecting dust in my, you know, in in my uh, desk all the time. And I started playing that again. So it's always great to, you know, go back to that amazing game. Uh, Very frustrating game, but really rewarding at the same time so that's what i'll be doing uh any other games that i'm that i'm looking forward to play uh i pretty much got the final fantasies remake uh because i played it but i've never actually completed it i did play the original one of course but um mm-hmm. that one i'm not i have not played it i am currently playing i'm um, still uh, final fantasy rebirth as well but mm-hmm. Uh, that's the one I'm looking forward to play because I, I recently bought it. I I went to GameStop yesterday and I got it. So, yay. Oh, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. so that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. so and, far and so good. Paul Guild Network, how are you, sir? Power Ranger. We have the Green Power Ranger, uh, you know, making a cameo today. And what have you been playing lately? That that's right. Favorite. Well, <laughs> as I mentioned earlier to the two of you, Yes. Fortunately, I have been able to get back to playing because my hand has healed quite significantly and is in that process of full recovery without the need of surgery, which is awesome. Yay. So I have been able to play for the first time in a while, not only just using a Joy-Con and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. uh, I've been playing Fortnite. I got back into Final Fantasy Rebirth, which is what I had to take off for like three and a half weeks. Mm-hmm. And um, I went back to playing my file of princess peach showtime which i'm just about to beat and yeah i I like the game quite a bit it's pretty fun it's awesome princess peach showtime and uh, fire emblem you said uh final fantasy rebirth oh Oh, awesome yeah yeah awesome so yeah that's one scene one you're about to play now right are you you're you're about to play final fantasy remake or rebirth lily uh i am currently playing rebirth and i'm about to start well I did play uh, remake when it first mm-hmm. came out, but I never okay. completed that one. So I am going to complete that game now. So oh. yes, I will be playing uh, Final Fantasy remake. Oh, awesome, awesome. So I'm guessing I mean, we're all playing Final Fantasy Rebirth because that's what I'm playing too, as well. Right, right. And and um, I'm also like I said, I've, I've installed my Wii U here. I've actually bought a Wii U nice. recently, uh, just so that I can play some Wii U games. I um, bought it when I, when Nintendo <laughs> turned it off mm-hmm. the online the online functionality, but that's okay because I'm playing um, Wind Waker, um, more uh, playing Wind Waker, but I'm not sure whether I should continue because I made a poll on the channel. What game do you guys want to see me play live on the channel? Wind Waker one. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna wait. Yes. In a way, and and then do you know? I have never passed that game. I've never 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 defeated it. I know the ending because I've heard it so many times mm. from from other from others talk about it, right? But you know they spoiled they spoiled the 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 ending oh, from the, the fact really that, yeah the fact that uh, that little lady was Princess Zelda the, the entire time. I'm like, oh man, come on! Ah, uh, spoilers are the worst, man. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? After what twenty years? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, pretty much twenty years. That's that's how long. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so yeah, I'm playing that game. So uh, I've put down Final Fantasy Rebirth for now, and I picked up Zelda. But I'm guessing I'll pick up Rebirth now off offline, and then play online uh, with with uh, my friends on the channel, uh, Wind Waker. So that's what's happening behind the scenes. And of course, what I've been doing is getting the show ready, right? Getting the Mike Odyssey show ready. There's so much that goes behind behind like producing an actual um so because i have way my have my standards are, my standards are way too high uh this is my fourth year on youtube mm-hmm. and so i want to take it to the next level right and so um i'm actually producing a real show and this is a one-man show it's a studio i, I edit i do everything mm-hmm. 
And so I'm gearing up the studio so that I can do everything on my own without having to change lenses, without having to change cameras and a whole bunch of things, just to make, make sure that I'm consistent with the content and then the quality stays consistent all throughout. So that's what I've been doing behind the scenes. If you are a member, there's a video going up soon behind the scenes of what's happening and you get you get a sneak peek of uh what i what i purchased what thing is what where it's going and of course another a tour of what's new in the studio and everything i'm, I'm about to get a, a new tv that one is 65 the, the new one is 100 inches so <laughs> it's gonna be like uh it's gonna serve as um as a tv like in the background but it's also gonna serve as a background so when i do certain spots in the in the new show I can I can be standing there and it looks like it's taking the entire wall, which is pretty mm-hmm. cool. And I didn't have to spend a dime because it's a sponsor who is who's who's uh shipping over a TV. So wow. shout oh, out to you cool. whenever that happens because I'm not gonna tell you I can't talk right now, but whenever that happens soon. It's... Yeah, soon. But yeah, um, we are live, guys. I don't know if you've heard the news, but we have it. We're gonna talk about it, we're gonna discuss it. And if you have been waiting. For something, I'm not gonna tell you to lose hope. I'm not gonna tell you to <laughs> not wait. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know. I think we'll do, let's let's go ahead and get straight into the topic right now. Let me do a recap here, and then Lily will take over and and read for us uh, a specific uh, post by a specific person who specifically some said something specific about a specific show. So let's go ahead. Um, if y'all know. The current topic is the Nintendo Direct. And let me go ahead go ahead here. Um, the current topic trending is the Nintendo Direct. Why? Why the Nintendo Direct? Because, well, Nintendo is silent. Nintendo is very, very quiet. It's like very, very quiet. It's like I put in a video, it's a little too quiet, right? And um, either when I mean quiet, I don't mean when, when it comes to, to, to sharing things on Twitter because they share things on Twitter all the time. Uh, third-party games. Uh, they they recently shared Pac-Man, which is a really cool game. The new one's coming out. Uh, amongst amongst their regular promotion for Paper Mario, Thousand Your Door, Princess Peach. They shared a really cool poster of Princess Peach. You guys just go copy it, print it out, have a poster, which is because it's really nice. If you guys have seen it, go to Nintendo Twitter, and then you'll see a poster of Princess Peach, which is really awesome. Um, and stuff like that. But when it comes to Nintendo first party games, right? Nintendo's off script. They're not all the script. They're 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 trolling every single one of us. And, and we don't know what's happening with Nintendo behind the scenes. I know they're cooking something. Doesn't smell like anything yet. <laughs> but they're cooking something. So we just have to wait. But in the meantime, we've all been having this 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 desire and this dream of that Nintendo Direct happening in the month of April because of of, of a certain leaker who published some information right and very quickly this leaker is called ph brazil he's the one responsible for leaking the information the very first one who spoke about the nintendo switch to delay right and so every other leaker jumped on top of that and said hey that's true that's true so that's why that way he gained instant credibility with that with that that one leak then the next day hey guys guess what we're getting an indie direct Woohoo! Hippie, you know and they were getting a, a nintendo direct right, right you know and then we're like really awesome and so ever since then we've been waiting until today <laughs> and so i want to have take lily take it away read what mr mr pre ph blurpity blurp said <laughs> in his all right movie. all right so um so it reads as follows hey everyone uh didn't want to leave you hanging for the entire month so here i am uh, you remember that info that I have back during the Switch 2 delayed? Uh, delay was um, that we had a, a direct in April and an Indie World presentation prior to that. I had those talks a couple of days after the Switch 2 discussion, discussion and but I now believe that the event info itself was already outdated at that point. I no longer believe will get a direct this month apart from one person who heard some rumbling two weeks ago no one else seems to have heard anything about the april direct since then uh which they probably would have at this point uh once uh so one source in particular that had talked about an april direct before is now expecting that next 
want to happen around um, the obvious um, Summer Game Fest time frame. So late May, early June, um, and there's an edit as well. Maybe even uh, this is also wrong. So, but mm -hmm. we'll get PlayStation slash Xbox events and the next, um, I mean, in that time frame, but mm -hmm. at least. And the Indie World seems to be, you know, have been planned to be aired um, pre um, GDC. But I also guess that those plans were out, went out the window immediately as well. Anyway, that's it. The beauty of talking about plan events, uh, date months in advance. Ahaha. <laughs> I'll catch flag for this and uh, that's all right. But hopefully that uh, helped people settle back and enjoy the games coming out instead of getting anxious over more announcements for a while. There's another edit. <laughs> also, upload... 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 <laughs> Obligatory apologies to anyone who had um, who was really looking forward to this due to my early info. Mm -hmm. I've uh, said this before, but I only said anything anything because I was on cloud nine that week, and I probably should have restrained myself. Haha, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and the end of it. So basically, that was PH Brazil. He released uh, a statement to just to kind of give us an update on yeah. that leak because nobody followed after that no, no one else heard anything after that so came later on okay i want to give you props i'll give him props because he came up he owned up to the information he released and he he publicly apologized for the information um according to what he said is that it's outdated information i don't mm -hmm. know how, how information becomes outdated you know i mean maybe he got information too soon or he heard it only from one source instead of confirming he released it right away, so that's what I'm what I'm guessing he did. He re he heard it from one source, released it right away, and and he could have that place. Uh, you know, he could have hold on to it, but he was on cloud nine. Why was he on cloud nine? Well, because he was the very first one who actually mentioned about the Nintendo Switch two being delayed to 2025, mm -hmm. and then all of these credible uh, insiders joined right away, and so he was, he was, I'm pretty sure he was overwhelmed. Like. Oh my god everybody's talking about me I'm, I'm on this channel i'm on this youtube channel i'm on this website everybody literally picked it up right mm -hmm. and so yeah he was on cloud nine that week and, and the excitement of it all you know it's, it's understandable so so kudos to, to ph brazil for for basically releasing that statement today um that does not necessarily mean nintendo has nothing planned is that we just don't know <laughs> you know it is a week, week i can't tell you nothing is happening in april because no one knows and, well, and, and no one but Pioro, which is Pioro is, is is Miyamoto in disguise. I know that I know that for <laughs> a fact. you know, or either either Miyamoto or his son. Um, if, and if what Pioro says is not a leak, it's a spoiler. Okay, so it's not even that's not even a leak. That's just guy got some guy that works for Nintendo. And by the way, didn't you guys see that that his his location leaked? He lives. Oh, in yeah. He lives in Japan, so I will not rule out that that's Miyamoto's son, his cousin, his brother, his his, his nephew, or whatever. I mean, I'm pretty sure Paul Gale knows Pioro, Pioro because Paul Gale is friends with, with Miyamoto. Um, but um, yeah, you know, that's the only leaker that I know that could actually say or hint something, and we, nobody doubts at all, right? But for now, for now. Um, this one source that we had, and the reason why we were sharing that source was because, of course, he got that first. I can't say he got that information, the first information, right? Because it hasn't happened yet, you mm -hmm. know? But, but, um, other credible leakers um, joined him, and so that's why the, com the Nintendo community joined him as well. So, but he released that today, and apparently to him, he's not sure we're getting something. Um, I think it was two videos ago where, where I mentioned, okay, um, if we would have been, if we would have gotten something, first thing, if we would have gotten an indie world showcase and a direct, I think we would have heard something by now. Yeah. <laughs> because if we're getting two back to back, we would have. It's already April twelfth. You know, this coming week we hit the we hit mid April, right? And I'm not gonna rule out that Nintendo next week pulls something out. I don't. I'm not. I, I can't say they they are. But I can't say they won't or they will, you know? We just don't know. And I think it's exciting a little bit, not knowing. Because mm -hmm. they can do anything at any moment. And we wake, wake up one day and see this announcement. And I think it's, it'll be just a bit more exciting than if we knew something was coming. And um, this is just me 
stating. What do you? Well, how do you guys feel? I'm going to throw it out to Paul. Paul, how do you feel? Um, how did you feel about this? For uh, the, you know, the update for the Nintendo Direct not uh, apparently not happening according to Mr. Ph Brazil. You know the. <coughs> pardon me. The person could have learned something new that leads it to being less likely to happen and just wanting to temper people's expectations and that's fine uh it could also be accurate information or the information was never the most accurate in the first place and then just having that self-doubt and wanting to kind of cut the losses before it gets too bad which mm -hmm. is kind of like the aforementioned but kind of two different ways of cutting people's um, expectations to not get them mad at you you know yeah. one is because you heard more information and one you just don't have a good feeling anymore but regardless mm -hmm. under understandable why i know some people will be upset that you hung the apple and then took it out in the first place but yeah. that that's the risk when you're following anybody with information i've received information in the past and sometimes it was just a rumor that i decided to share that was flat out not accurate and i didn't know and sometimes i've learned things on my own that this was planned in some capacity or that it was something that was laid out there on the table, which just never came to. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't, you still get kind of, you know, uh, ha hammered by a, a certain audience. So good though, at least that he was up front or she or the, you know, the individual, they were up front, but I'm kind of like what you said, Mike, I'm kind of like on your, your side of it too. We've got 18 days of April left. It is possible to still get it. Uh, I guess to be safe, just don't anticipate something. But looking mm -hmm. at the calendar, the best case scenario, right, mm -hmm. is like 17th is something indie world related, and then 24th a week later would be Nintendo Direct. Oh my gosh, that would be incredible. I doubt that they would throw in both on the same week, mm -hmm. but you never know. But the Nintendo Financial Report, that's May 8th or May 6th. That's yeah. coming up very soon, too. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to really go big with the fans, you would have like a 17th, a 24th, and that 6th or 8th. And, mm -hmm. you know, fans such as, you know, us, we do like when Nintendo shares the system that has now hit 141 million and this and that. Because that's like your sports team having a touchdown, sinking that basket, like having that next accolade. Mm -hmm. Um so even though it's not news in terms of what we're going to play, it's still cool stuff to get. So I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not mad at all if it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. My faith was, you know, reasonably in check from the get go, realizing this could be a thing. Yeah. Before I really buy into it and say, yeah, it's happening. Did I think it could? Right. And that's why I always thought, yeah, I, I think it could. And that's sort of where I was, why I, be, why, why I was calm about it and mm -hmm. hyped, but not unnecessarily so. Because I was like, Nintendo did have something in February, but it's not their typical year yet. So I, I could see an April thing. Yeah. Okay. I'll give it a 40% chance that it's going to happen, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, that's a little bit back and forth with it, but yeah. I'm not mad. We've got, we've, we've got games, and we know that there's going to be more games, so it's all yeah. good. Yeah, for some reason, this year is so different. I'm like, I'm not, I, for the first time, I'm not, I don't find myself upset anymore or even even let down or anything, because mm -hmm. it, it's been a different year with a different atmosphere, and you can, you're always expecting something to happen, and you know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, right? But in the meantime, we do have Paper Mario, we have Luigi's Mansion uh, in the books, and those are two really great games that a lot of people have not played. I know I haven't played Paper Mario, I was in your door, and I'm looking forward to that game. So, you know, we have that there. Uh, Lily, what do you think? What do you think about the, the, the news? Does it affect you in any way? How do you feel about it? Uh, well, we, we talked about it last week, uh, mm -hmm. what will break it for us, and we'll definitely, I, I, we agree, uh, you and I, Mike, with yeah. um, uh, with not having a director all, at all, right? But I also agree with Paul that we're still 18 days in, you know, yeah, we, we yeah. could probably potentially have something. Um, I mean, it could be that it's just the indie world um, and not mm -hmm. a Nintendo Direct per se, because we did had a Direct, but it wasn't really like um, Nintendo Direct. It was a, a yeah. partner showcase instead. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, and I also, I'm kind of used to or accustomed to this, um, you know, Nintendo tweeting about a certain event like two days prior of the event. Mm -hmm. So that being said, if we are aiming for, let's say, Wednesday, um, April 17th, then mm -hmm. probably we'll hear something on Monday, you know, if, if that's yeah. going to happen. Um, the other thing is that I have, I think, I'm not, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think I've heard of, you know, Nintendo Directs in the world very, very close to each other. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say like the same week, but it almost feels like it was the same week. I, yeah. I can recall something happening like that. But um, then if we do get a, a Direct, it'll be, you know, probably for the last week and it makes sense because uh, i mean everybody knows this but if, if if whoever is watching this or listening to this does not know this um nintendo will always try to push something on their you know fiscal year they run by fiscal years it's not just um the first uh, the first uh, month of the year or the last month of the year they have numbers to you know report to those investors right so that's part of the thing and they do have other things going on but just the major titles that we have are just going to be uh paper mario a thousand year door and luigi's mansion which i'm very excited about by the way yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i i feel like we still have a little bit of hope but i would say don't get your hopes really high up mm -hmm. um i it's like when you're watching a movie you watch the trailer you're very excited you're very hyped about it and then when you go and watch the movie it's not really what you were expecting so i always tell yeah. everybody just have your expectations a little bit below that so i'll say let's say that we're not gonna get an april direct and if we do we're gonna be very very hyped and excited about that if that happens yeah. so yeah i agree it is well, what it is <laughs> I agree 100%. I just want to remind the chat, if you want to contribute to the current topic, and if you have a question, you want us to, to discuss it during the the the, the, the the actual podcast, you can do that with any type of super chat. You can ask any question you want or contribute to what we're saying. For example, if you have your own opinion on, on the same topic, you can do that if you want us to highlight it and kind of answer uh, or answer your question you can do that with any super chat or at the end of the podcast, we always have our Q&A where we can, we will take all the questions we can and then answer you there as well. Okay, so you have two options. You can do it during the podcast um, to, to kind of interact with us with the super chat or you can do it towards the end with the Q&A as well. All right. And, and so make sure to like this video, please. Yeah. That helps a lot. So right hit the like button, please. We're almost at a 100. We're almost at 100 already. So go ahead. We should have like at least 94 likes if possible. Thank you. You're awesome. Make sure to visit All Gale Network. Like his page too. Lily and like her page too. Actually, actually let's all get, let's get all three pages to 90, 92 likes. How about we do that? Let's, let's do Let's have fun with that. All right. And um, there's two things that are, that, that are happening, guys. Um, you know, let's not rule out the Nintendo Direct just yet. Like again, we we we, we want to remain balanced, right? We want we we don't want to be like, oh, woe is me, or you know, or lose all hope. But we also don't want to be overly excited. But there are two major things that are happening. Um, one thing I don't think I've heard anybody talk about, but the other thing is that Hollow Knight Silk Song got rated. Okay, it's on the Xbox website. So you can wish list whatever but the fact that it was rated it means that is a it, it, it's ready okay that's the type of game that belongs in either in an indie world or mm -hmm. in the in nintendo direct it depends on where it belongs it's a game that's very well anticipated by a lot of people i think we've been waiting like two years since they announced it on nintendo switch right yeah. it's been a while right it, it's maybe been, even long longer even, i think even longer. i don't know the, I lost yeah. track. It's been a while. But it, it, so it's finally rated, right? So that itself points to some kind of presentation happening, whether it's an Indie World Showcase or it's an Nintendo Direct, because that game belongs in either or. It belongs in the presentation. The other thing that's happening is that micro, Microsoft has some announcements. Okay, there are some games that Microsoft is actually bringing to other consoles as well. And if you know Nintendo, you know Microsoft, Nintendo likes to announce their own things, like their own games, with, you know, like inside. So I've never, I, I rarely hear, maybe I hear like maybe Summer Game Fest or another presentation. Oh yeah, it's coming to Nintendo Switch. But normally Nintendo likes to wait. Okay, let's wait for our presentation. We want to announce it. 
um, here and give us in the release date. So if Microsoft has anything to announce or the Switch in particular, right, then our presentation could also do that. Either the I, mean, I don't think the indie role will qualify because Microsoft is too big for that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would say more like, like a Nintendo Direct uh, will be good for Microsoft to present whatever they whatever they have. Um, I know that there are people that were waiting on they they announced that one game grounded right grounded um, in the last partner showcase and and that was from Microsoft. We were expecting other two two other games. One of them had to do with uh, what um, I, I'm I'm getting a brain fart. <laughs> what, what, what's the name of, the, of that other game, Paul? The shooting game of, of Microsoft that's coming yeah. to the Switch. Yeah, and they they, they it. it, it they announced it wasn't, it wasn't yeah, sea of thieves it was grounded and um there was another game but um so you know the, the fact that is that, is that right now we're we're entering presentation season you know you know playstation has pentiment. pentiment there you go that's the game yeah. um so we have we have an, an event happening by playstation soon we have an event happening by microsoft soon right um and so we have the, the the fiscal meeting happening soon on March May six, right? May six, that uh you know with, with Nintendo, and so we know that normally around that time we always hear something from Nintendo. We have we hear from them, right? And so we can't really give all hope just yet because there might be something uh, along the way from them. We just don't know when. Um, this is this one source that basically got some information early on, and it looks like that information has changed. We all know that it could well be it could be true. He might have heard something that might have been scheduled, but Nintendo is not following the script. <laughs> They're doing whatever they can this year. And uh with that, I want to invite, I want to welcome you guys to Zach Hendrix is in the house. Welcome, Zach. Hello, hi, hi. Hey, hi. hello, hello. Oh, geez. It is good. good to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for here, man. How are you doing? You got, doing uh, good. Let me, is, uh, let me go ahead and tell you this, this question. So how are you doing? What have you been playing? And then I'll ask you a question after that. Go ahead. Okay, okay. I've been doing good. Uh, this last, like, 30-ish minutes, 45 minutes has been a little crazy. Because you know how it is. I've been streaming at uh, my last streams here. I was at yeah. my sister's house. Yeah. And so this is my first stream at home. And you know how every time you reset up your stuff, yeah. everything just breaks oh man. it's just like oh the camera doesn't work i got the camera working oh hey the sound's not working what is going on but <laughs> i am here and i have an energy drink so i'm about to be really good uh, awesome. but i have been playing a little bit of smash ultimate oh nice mm-hmm. yeah that's been nice and of course my fall guys you know okay, yeah yeah mr beasts and stumble guys i'll skip over that part <laughs> since i'm late but <laughs> But yeah, was there a third question or was that it? So no, yeah, just just wondering how you were and um, and um and what you were playing. But we we've been talking about um Lily went ahead and read for us the new um uh, kind of uh what do you call that? Like a statement, yeah, a statement. Uh statement put out by Leaker PH Brazil, the very first guy who leaked the, who talked about the the late for Switch 2. Um, and then later on, he talked about the, the potential Nintendo Direct that was happening in April, along with the new showcase. He, today, he issued a statement kind of apologizing because it looks like he had uh, information that was outdated and that he no longer believes that there's a Direct happening in April. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. So, um, the question that I asked Paul and, and Lily is how they feel about that information. You know, knowing that Nintendo is, is, kind, of, is kind of silent, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say silent because they are they are on Twitter. They're they're showing actually they actually updated uh, NSO with with I think two games recently. We have a, a really old game called Blurpity Blurp something, and then one with Mario and Luigi, which is kind of weird, right? But they updated NSO, and I just mm-hmm. wanted to uh, ask you how how do you feel about that information about you know the state of what Nintendo is and how we might not be getting anything in April by them you know i feel like everything these last two three months has just kind of been big question mark after big question mark and like even with that information being potentially outdated yeah i still feel like nintendo's gonna announce something even if it's a random five minute 
indie showcase. Yeah. Even, you know, yeah. uh, Nintendo likes money and they've been doing a really good job at making money lately. And Thank so you. just letting all of their hype kind of die in the back half of the year and just being like, eh, we got nothing. Just seems a little weird to me. <laughs> and so whether it's April or May, something big, small, medium, medium, somewhere in between. I think something's coming sooner than later. I, I like that medium one. <laughs> I'm a big fan of mediums. All right. Let's so we have a super chat. Our rainbow love. Now let's go ahead and highlight it here. It says, uh, are Sony or Xbox as mysterious about announcements as Nintendo is? Is Nintendo switching things up for, on purpose? Is this a strategy or an actual delay? Who wants to take that? Let me, let me throw that to, to I want to know what Paul thinks about this. What do you think, Paul? Regarding, regarding that first part of the question, if Sony or Microsoft are as mysterious as Nintendo, they don't have as many announcements to make in the first place yeah. because they operate a little bit differently in how they develop games. So not necessarily are they just as mysterious, but since they don't have as big of a portfolio of games that are constantly in development, yeah. it seems that way. Um, but they also are companies that hold things to the chest uh, respectively on both ends. You know, in back of the day, they would kind of wait for that E3 for a big presentation. And then in pre pre uh, social media days, you know, we would get occasional press kits and stuff like that yeah. sent to us via email, but they're about as tight lipped as Nintendo. Um, but just, they don't have as much to say. So maybe it, it's felt a little bit differently, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And is Nintendo switching things up on purpose? I think Nintendo is because it is likely, I mean, the fact is, the truth is, Nintendo Switch 2 is closer to coming out than not. You know, yeah. we are not in the first half of Nintendo Switch anymore. We are in the second half. We don't know, though, if we're in the last quarter or the last eighth, which would imply it's coming out next year, but it's the latter half. And probably it's in that, like, last eighth, which would mean this, this successor is coming out in a year or so. And Nintendo is operating just a little bit differently to, you know, a good question. And I think this is actually a podcast discussion. So I don't want to go too far into it, but I do want to answer the question. Yeah. Why hold on to things? Well, think of it like this. You maximize the most amount of audience and potential by kind of having things go slow burning. Not too slow that you don't capture the right people's interest, but slow enough that you don't capture all audiences at once. Think of it like this, too. Um, if Nintendo had two movies ready to go, the Super Mario Brothers movie in April, and they did have a Donkey Kong film in May, do you think both movies would operate and sell as well? No, they would eventually compete with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason why you strategically put things in place. There's a reason why you don't have Breath of the Wild and then Super Mario Odyssey come out back to back. There are similar audiences, but different enough that if you stagger things, you do get each game to have its maximum sales. Right now, mm -hmm. Nintendo's building off of the fact that, hey, we have these smaller titles that are still doing their job, keeping the system where it needs to be. Still selling a few hundred thousand per month, still selling... 1. Point X amount million, 2 million per quarter, still winning big time in Japan for the last four weeks in a row in the Famitsu charts, destroying the competition. In the last three of those four weeks, selling more respectively than the last than it did for that same week in 2023. Here in year eight, selling 20,000 more, 17,000 more, 12,000 more than those same weeks last year. Let's not give more now because it's doing fine don't let it go to zero because it's too hard to build momentum when there's no momentum yeah but you could let it go down and then reinvigorate by having the direct <clears throat> they must not have too much left hidden in nintendo switch's pipeline that that's probably why they're holding on to it for a little bit longer yeah so then mm -hmm. when this last little bit of april may june people getting antsy then again, we're the only ones getting antsy. The the 4 million people online, not the 100 million plus. 
my my son who's playing is perfectly happy with the games my daughter is perfectly happy with the games that they have and what's available on eShop to look at you know the the majority of the demographic out there has yet to experience the vast majority of what Nintendo Switch has to offer. So they're not clamoring for a new system. They're still buying it in the stores. So Nintendo has so many things to piece together that I think they don't have a lot left, but if they showed it now, then eventually there would be this gap that is felt between then and Nintendo Switch 2, and they might be tempted to prematurely show off NS2 just to appease everyone's interest but right now let this last and then shoot it off so then from when they shoot off nintendo switch's last batch there's not that big of a gap between then and ns2's announcement it's all a part of the strategy it's it's all a part of nintendo optimizing and trying to satisfy every market take care of their sales everything you know my my opinion on it partially based off of Knowing the company well, studying it a little bit from having friends work there and having some discussions and some of it just from a take a look back at the industry and how would I want to, you know, maximize people coming to me for a, a task, an object, a skill set. Yeah. Real people in one at a time, not all eggs in one basket all at once. Yeah. Then it's too crowded, too overwhelming. I really like how. Oh, sorry, Mike. Oh, no, I was gonna say anybody want to add to it. <laughs> uh, I, I was just. Say, I really like how Paul, you broke this down all technical and whatnot. Like we know you're the sales number guy. Uh, for those <laughs> yeah. of you who aren't following Paul on Twitter slash X yet, you should do it because it's everything he just said except with actual numbers in it too. Yeah. But I also like how on the opposite side of what you said, we had Joycey leave a comment mm-hmm. yep. equally accurate but less technical saying that she doesn't think Nintendo is switching up anything it just seems that way because the Switch era in her opinion mm-hmm. was better planned out than anything they've done in a while and so we're yep. kind of entering the calm before the storm yeah yeah uh, yeah I agree I agree um Lily anything to that uh I feel like I totally agree with uh, Paul and Zach about this, also with Josie about what's happening. Like it's not um, it is on purpose, mm-hmm. but um, because it's being that's the strategy here. Because I mean, if you put it like the way that they were working on previous consoles before and previous, you know, um, launching titles for the consoles, mm-hmm. it was very better well planned compared to what we currently have on the Nintendo Switch 2 that we know it's coming it's just we don't know if they're gonna announce it this year and release it next year let's say October for example I don't know but um, it's coming it's happening right so it's just a matter of you know how they're gonna be putting their pieces together and you know setting up the uh, the game board and their strategy on how to um, make sure that everything is well aligned with mm-hmm. their time frames especially because of the last two let's say that uh paper mario and uh, luigi's match is going to be like the last batch of the nintendo switch and then they're free to you know announce something a little bit more yeah. big uh as the tendency tries to like keeps going down because if we, we go into perspective back when 2020 everybody was getting a switch because you know everybody was slacked out and everything so the, the sales went up completely crazy and now we are even though it's being stable i mean we're running out of gas here pretty much right so um i feel like that's definitely going to be the case um and they're gonna keep on being silent until they have that kind of um perfect timing for them to announce something big so i agree i agree um i'm sure i want to i want to keep my answer short for the first part of the question Yes, Nintendo is more mysterious than any other company out there. Uh, Xbox and and Microsoft, Xbox and Microsoft is a company. <laughs> Xbox, and, <laughs> Xbox and PlayStation, uh, the developer, they are a little bit more open than Nintendo is. You know, they're they're all guarded, but when it comes to announcing games, even games that are are in development, they will announce a game is in development and tell you right away, even beforehand. Um, with certain games, with certain franchises. We know the Call of Duty. We know the name of Call of Duty, the, the next Call of Duty. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not even, uh, Microsoft hasn't even announced it yet, but we know the name of it, and we know it's coming. We don't know when it's going to be announced, but they, we know that it's in development, and it's going to be shortly 
what to be announced. My uh, Nintendo is guarded, and it's more mysterious when it comes to games because I mean, look at Metroid Prime Four. I, I I'm pretty sure they're kicking themselves in the butt by by saying that game was in development. <laughs> they want to just stay quiet and mm-hmm. then release it when it was done, right? From then on, I have not heard besides Tears of the Kingdom, you know, just progress, you know, pro- uh, progress on a certain game, like um, like any other game. Like only with Tears of the Kingdom have I heard so much transparency from Nintendo. You know, and, and when it comes to their updates, they did that. Uh, but when it comes to everything else, they are mysterious. We never knew about Mario Wonder. Mario Wonder is there. They they took their time. We found that we found out everything about the devel- the development after the game was out, and we were all rejoicing because they, you know, it, it was it's it's an awesome game, right? Um, Nintendo Switch things uh, purpose. Everything Nintendo does is on purpose. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything yeah. Is on purpose. Everything. You know. Um, and. And they have a strategy for everything. You know, sometimes things come up. They, if it's true that the Nintendo Switch 2 was delayed, maybe the reason we have a gap now is because they were planning on, on issuing a presentation. Mm. And because those plans have changed, we have this little gap, <laughs> you know? So that could be a, that could be something. But at the end, honestly, <laughs> nobody will ever know. All we know is that, you know what? Nintendo fans are very spoiled because we get games every single month of the year. <laughs> and mm. so the reason... Once, once we don't get one month, uh, oh no, we're jittery and we need our fix really fast. Nintendo, what's happening? But well, in reality, January, February, March. Okay, no April, but but May, but May, June. <laughs> you know, we're getting two two games in 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 May, right? PlayStation is getting what three games in a year. Xbox is getting what two games or whatever, you know. So we're used to getting 10, 10, 10 plus games in a year you know so we're kind of jittery that way so yeah i mean i, mean, I have said i i accept it i'm very jittery I'm like all <laughs> shaking <and> everything <laughs> i'm <Yeah>. like nintendo <laughs> sleep with my controller <laughs> you know, you know it, it is interesting the the big difference between nintendo and sony and uh microsoft because nintendo is the only one of the three big game companies that is a game company first like i get that xbox Mm -hmm. is a game company but they're owned by another company you know by microsoft Mm -hmm. yeah same with with playstation and sony you know like the playstation could discontinue and sony's gonna be fine like they would take a hit obviously but like they make everything so you know between just any anything tech it's like oh i want something i can play a video game with it's like oh we got something for you and that's just like by the way, do you also have like a TV? I could know where I could get a TV. I could play this game on. Oh, we got you there too. By the way, do you want a fridge? We, we got one. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so you know, even how they treat their first parties, like Nintendo, all the big games on the Switch are basically Nintendo first party games, mm-hmm. where an Xbox first party game, like a Bethesda games, an Xbox first party, but Bethesda is still making those announcements and sharing that and whatnot you know what i mean so it's kind of like it's it's interesting like how different they are structurally from the ground up yeah yeah yeah, that's my four cents on that this uh next question comes from a a member for 23 months now on the channel thank you uh blue moon she's one of our head moderators on the channel uh amazing uh resource um and 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 my friend fantastic subscriber i I don't know what i would do without blue moon on the channel she's awesome um says uh do you think nintendo is heading for a wii u disaster i don't see a re-release of uh, at 60 uh selling much uh switch to 2024 hype um uh don't think we i don't think we're, we're headed to any other wii u disaster i think nintendo's actually positioned themselves really well with the nintendo switch and they've actually perfected what they wanted to achieve i think forever because um, nintendo's always been a handheld gaming system they've always been a console system they finally were able to perfect perfect and bring them both together and and make a handheld and a home console at the same time and that's why i think the nintendo switch is the best console of every gen- any generation so far uh, because they've been focusing all of their time into making amazing games for that one console and giving both the mobile experience and the handheld and the console experience, something that no other company has been able to do as successful as Nintendo. So what they're gonna do with the Switch 2 is continue the trend, right? Uh, um, handheld, uh, home console, 
uh, better power, better graphics. They don't really do have to, have to do much. They really don't have to do much. All they have to do is just is just continue the success of the Switch. I know that they want a bigger screen. Um, you know, improve on the Joy Cons because you know improve on every little thing that the system um, needs because of the times we're in. Not necessarily because it really needs it. The Nintendo Switch has amazing games, but because of how technology is moving forward, then the system has to move forward with technology, with the graphics and and and, and storage. Games are bigger, so we need better, more space. Uh, people are blinder like me, so we need a bigger screen. You know, things like that. Uh, but I don't think we, we, we. I think Nintendo has learned from the Wii U era, and I think they've only gotten better. I mean, the Switch is is just proof of that. You know. I think Switch is a good system to actually be excited for the next. You know, to get you excited for the next. And $60 is is actually a good price because Nintendo's been the only company who's actually have maintained their, their, their games at a good price without increasing it over the longest period of time. It's like they've, they've been... With all inflation happening because I'm pretty sure Nintendo's suffering from inflation just like every other company is. They've been able to maintain their consoles at a, at, a, at a good price range when Microsoft and Xbox both increased their system costs, you know, and their games have been maintained at, at a 39 49 59 and uh, 59 59 $60, right? They just added a new layer, which is a $70 game. And that's how, that's how I think is the Nintendo president of America explained it. Uh, what's his name again? It's not Reggie. I'm not Reggie. Doug Bowser? Doug, Mr. Bowser. Mm-hmm. Bowser played that perfectly. He said, nothing is changing. We just added an, another tier because it depends on how big the game is and how, how, how many hours you're going to spend on it. Like, Tears of the Kingdom is a massive game and therefore it's a $70 game, but there will still be the $59 game, the, the $49 and the $39 games, you know? Um, anybody want to uh, wanna add? I know at Walmart, uh, Nintendo games are always ten dollars cheaper than anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. out. So you still get those sixty dollar Nintendo games brand new for fifty at Walmart. So yeah, and mm-hmm. physical is normally cheaper than, than than digital for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I specifically on the is sixty dollars too much for a re release. I mean, you could argue subjectively that it doesn't make you feel good. And it might even make you feel ugh because you know that it's a real release. But once again, we're the few million hardcore that truly know. For the 130 million that don't, they're going to go in to the store and say, dang, Luigi's Mansion 3 was so good. I remember when we bought that Halloween 2019. Wait, here's another one. Luigi's Mansion 2. We never played that, did we? Yeah, it looks good on the back of the box. 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. And if you like Luigi's Mansion 3 for the 17 hours that you played that, you're probably going to might like this game for the 17 hours that you're going to play it. And it's going to be a similar yet different experience. And if it's a high quality release with nice looking polygons and shadows and effects and good gameplay, which it does have and just that much better, the vast majority of people are going to accept it as a new game and not feel any kind of Ugh, weird yeah. feeling. <laughs> you know? For, for some people it wouldn't be worth spending twenty dollars on a re-release of terminator 2 in 4k here in 2024 because they have the old movie in their mind they have the old dvd that was in 720p and it's good enough but for some people they would say oh a 4k remastered version that tightens it up and it's good i'll pay twenty dollars again for that is this real i want it you know that's that's with that's with everything. That's, if if you want it enough, there's going to be a, a demographic that's going to say no. I want the best quality version of that. And yeah. and to the biggest part of the audience on Nintendo Switch, these re-releases are new. Yeah, I I agree. And I, 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 another thing is that I feel that we we are getting re-releases is because remember the Wii U. Or the Nintendo 3DS uh, games are not, are not compatible with Nintendo Switch, so they need to re-release the system. They need to kind of remake them um, for the Nintendo Switch. You know, they might be using a, a, a new engine, but they're still 
there's still a lot of work into building up this game again in order to be, make it compatible and bring it to a new audience. I think that moving forward with backwards compatibility, if this is a thing, with Nintendo Switch to Nintendo Switch 2, that wouldn't be a problem just because you'll have your back, you'll have your library of games you can bring with you. And so um, if they do sell it on the Switch 2, it could be for a new audience. Um, don't know how that's going to work, but I think um, I think that's not going to be a problem moving forward when it comes to newer games. Because uh, even Miyamoto himself said, the way that we're, we're developing now, the system we're developing now, makes it easier for us to bring the back catalog forward than we when we did it with Wii U and prior consoles. So him, mm -hmm. in a way, was confirming that the next system will be backwards compatible because it's, it's going to be easier to bring the Switch games forward with them. It's like it's like think about Windows, Windows, Wind. What's Windows? Xbox one runs on Windows, right? And an Xbox, you can play Xbox 360 games <laughs> on Xbox 3 Series X. It's always been backwards compatible all the way from the get-go. It's like I saw Minecraft the very first time on the very first Xbox. And then in Xbox Series X, I still have it right there. I can just download it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's still compatible because it's still the same software, same operating system. Nintendo has has finally gotten to that point, but I think it's because they, you know, because Nintendo Switch is the first system where it's two in one, the, the hybrid and the the the, mm -hmm. and the console. And so they've actually perfected their OS. And what they're going to do from now on is improve upon that OS moving forward, making every system from now on backwards compatible with the with, with the previous console. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's the that's the, that's the dream. <laughs> Until Nintendo announces backwards compatibility, that's <laughs> just it's all speculation, it's all wish lists, it's all dreams, and and and, and, yeah. and ponies and rainbows. And... You bring up a good point, though. Oh, sorry, I thought you were. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You bring up a good point uh, with the Xbox reference because, like, it's easier when somebody does something; it's easier for the second person to do it. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and you can look up videos of people system linking and playing the same game locally mm -hmm. uh, with four players on an OG Xbox, a 360, an Xbox One, and an Xbox Series X, yeah. all plugged into each other, playing an OG Xbox game locally, mm -hmm. like just like. Cool. That's so cool. And that's been done. And yeah. so like Nintendo, they're not starting from scratch. They have Xbox to reference, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, I would be so shocked if we didn't get backwards compatibility. Yeah, be, yeah. yeah me too. I would be bedazzled in the worst way. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's like, for example, anybody who owns the Switch has Splatoon 3. Guess what? You'll be able to play Splatoon 3 um, with somebody who has Switch two and they're yeah. playing Splatoon three also online together, right? Uh, and so having that that brand new OS from Nintendo moving forward is going to make that possible. Um, but yeah, I think I think I think the future is bright for Nintendo. I think it's very very bright. I think the best is yet to come. I think Nintendo's about to issue is bet its best system ever if they just improve on what is already working. Because I can't tell you. That the next Nintendo will not be something completely different with, with Joy Cons that fly and okay, all right. So this means this little thing here means that right now it has hit the hour on Instagram. So Instagram uh, people watching Instagram, if you want to continue at the Facebook because unfortunately on Instagram they're only allowed us to stream one hour on Instagram. So if you are on Instagram right now, you have one minute before the stream ends in order to get to the other side. So we are on YouTube. We are on on uh, Tik. No, we are on Twitch. You are on YouTube. We are on Facebook. X. Yeah, and we are on X, either at Paul Gale, Lily Hyrule, or at the Mike Odyssey channel. Are, are you streaming it on your site? On your site, uh, Zach? I am not. Okay. So either on Lily. You can go to Lily, you can go to uh, Paul Gale, or you can go to The Odyssey and join us there. Uh, so thank you for watching us on Instagram. And this is the end of the podcast there. <laughs> now, continuing the podcast, we have uh, the next topic, which, by the way, this, this, this very first topic was very awesome. Yeah. And thank, you, thank, you for the, uh, thank you for the super chat. Let me go back over here. Thank you for the super chat. Um, wait, we have another super chat. Hello. Uh, we got another here, J two. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 wait. 
man. I let it get. I think I'm gonna get to it quick. One there. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. there. Okay. I think Can I, I read it when you get it. Like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I do like dramatic right. or something. Take it away. I gotta what does this say? Okay. What would be a good entry price for the Switch 2? Do you think 350 or 400 US dollars? That's a good voice, by the way. <laughs> and and um, I, I will categorize that voice around, wait, 60, 75, 80 years old. Um, like and um, <coughs> right now we have the Switch OLED at, at, at $349. So that's like 350, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I would love it would be awesome if we if we if Nintendo maintains that that price point for the Nintendo Switch 2 at 349, right? Um, but most likely we're gonna have a 399 a 399 399 system just because mm-hmm. of the internals of the hardware, even though the, the external will not change as much and it's not as as expensive. You can give Nintendo props if the leaks are true that they are just trying to cut costs and whatever they can to keep the, the model um affordable for us because that's what nintendo nintendo's job is to give they want to have their console at, in, in as many houses as they can and mm-hmm. not only that but they want at least to, to have at least three to four to five systems per household depending on your house right so with that playstation and xbox they can care less if they have like two or three you're never going to have a house with five xboxes <laughs> or, or, or <laughs> boxes right with, with, with the five to six hundred price point. but nintendo because it is a, a, a handheld and a, a port in a console, they would love to sell three to four for household. They want they want uh, Bobby, and they want Lily, and they want Tommy to have one. They want mom and dad to have their Switch, right? Whether it's a mobile mobile portable one or a hand or a, the dockable one. And so they're gonna they're they're gonna keep their prices at at the lower end. Not sure if they can, if it's gonna stay very low. But I think that for three ninety nine, I see that three ninety nine. Yeah, I wouldn't rule out three fifty because Nintendo's Nintendo. They might surprise us, and that would be super awesome. But I, w- I would say uh, three ninety nine, which is four hundred. So, what do you guys think? Can I answer this one next? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm itching to share my idea because yeah. I've said this live before. But hold up, hold up. TM TM trademark. <laughs> I'll be right. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay, it, it makes so much freaking sense, and it's it, it avoids customer confusion, mm-hmm. and it's also really pro consumer, and pro Nintendo. You release not multiple models, just one Nintendo Switch Two system, mm-hmm. but one of them is three hundred dollars and does not come with a dock. Mm-hmm. The dock is available to be sold to be purchased separately for one hundred dollars, but. There's a $400 version that is that same Nintendo Switch that comes with a dock. Okay. So right from the get-go, you have an entry point that is more affordable to family members that came off of spending a $300 Nintendo Switch, which was the bulk of the $140 million, unless yeah. a Nintendo Switch OLED has finally outsold the total amount of base Nintendo Switches. That might be possible. But mm-hmm. regardless, you have a $300 more easy price point to get into, but you have the understanding of it is only portable for now. They do sell the other docks separate. You don't have to have any qualms about like, oh, but it costs 150 to get the dock. And now the whole price is more, you know, the same price is just money allotment. Uh, We have 300 now for our family. The other 100 we could use later. And then we have the home console experience Mm -hmm. or the 400 straight up. And then you have the same experience as you did with Nintendo Switch, where it could be on TV and at dock and, and portable mode. Yeah. Furthermore, what really makes this idea fantastic is if, as you know, probably the Nintendo Switch OLED model dock does have the innards to display images in 4K. Yeah. There's nothing that could be done with the system itself to capitalize on that, mm-hmm. but the OLED dock specifically can. Unless if the form factor is that much different, if the Nintendo Switch 2 can be used in a Nintendo Switch OLED model dock to take advantage of that 4K component, mm-hmm. then you've just saved the, the problem that much more where, where, hey, 
you might not have the 2.1 cable and it might just be the base 4k or it might not have the swivel on the back that allows you to do this and that but if you have an oled dock at home families you could just buy the 300 dollars model and then now you have a pretty simple way of getting into the next generation because you have a cost efficient way and you have a way that's you know the full shebang and i don't think it would confuse customers um and i don't i don't know i i love it but i if, love it if, if you don't like it it won't hurt my feelings yeah. but, you know. i love yeah. you know, I, we love it i love it because that that will just guarantee nintendo selling more systems i think yeah. if Nintendo does that they can literally sell close to the amount of systems that the nintendo switch has mm -hmm. you know because you basically they're, they're they're showing they care for for people's pockets and, and families who have already have at least the latest dog right in their homes oh i already have a dog it's compatible all right let's let, let i'll get the i'll get it without the dog um if, and and of course if they release a special edition dog with whatever you can get that later on or whatever but i i i love that idea hold on let's see yeah because um what? no that's not it I'm trying i was to looking find... for the sound that's <laughs> not that either <laughs> No. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, well, find us something. Go ahead. Uh, so, what I wanted to add about that, also uh, to Paul's point and also to Mike's, um, I wasn't uh, a Game Boy girl. Like portable has not really been a thing for me, unless I'm forced to do it. I'd rather be playing, you know, sitting on a couch or whatever. Um, now, but getting the idea of having an actual dock that has um, that functionality, it, it'll be amazing because for example, I uh, my, my boyfriend, he's currently, I mean, he usually wants to play portable, but I want to play on the Switch. And when he's playing the Switch, I cannot play the Switch because, you know, we only have one Switch here in the house. Mm -hmm. But would it be amazing for, uh, for us to have that option? I will buy two Nintendo Switch 2s and one dock. And that will give Nintendo a little bit more money. And also, it'll be more convenient for me because that way I can be yeah. playing with the dock. And he can be playing with the Nintendo Switch too, just being portable, right? It's more convenient for him. It'll be more convenient for me. Um, also, like even the fact of, you know, getting together and, oh, we just mm -hmm. have one dock here and everybody can bring their Switch and everybody can be playing locally. Um, something that doesn't happen that often anymore because of online and everything. Yeah. So I feel like uh, that'll be amazing. I mean, that'll be like a great uh selling point also to have to be for the dock to be able to do something more than not just being a dock and being able to you know just switch put your switch on it because there are a lot of competitive there are a lot of brands out there that they were making their own docks and it was pretty much just you know a dock that will allow you to display whatever you're playing with an hdmi functionality and that was it yeah. but there was it's just plastic there's nothing in it aside yeah. from the ports that you have on the side and stuff like that got, but it'll be amazing that. we could do more than that right i got something spicy to add to, to that um uh, before that do, uh, do you have anything to add uh, um zach i do mine's a little different though so if you're adding something okay. spicy to lilies you should go first okay so there was a patent that was discovered by the odyssey it had to do with the dock, but the dock was also a portable streaming device, meaning a hub. Okay, so it was a hub where you could also, um, it, it, uh, let's say you buy a Roku, you buy an Apple TV, you know, it's like a little portable hub there that mm -hmm. has Hulu, Netflix, all that stuff installed on the on the hub. Then that, that next Nintendo Switch dock is not just going to be a paperweight there. It's also going to be a hub, whether you have a Switch on it or not. It'll still read the, the the apps that you would have in it, and you can also update it via. Um, if you turn it on, it'll 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 read it, and what you'll get without the with, with installed on it is the the your, your little icons for 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 Hulu or Netflix or Disney Plus or Apple TV Plus, whatever like that, right? You install the switch, it'll automatically detect the switch, and and then you can start playing. It's like when you insert the disc. In, 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 a, in a Wii or a Wii U, you see that little disc come up in the corner, but you still have all the other apps there. You know, that's what the patent was describing. You know, so like a, like, like a, like a hub. And that could be an incentive for people who want to just kind of reduce the clutter on their, on, their, on their TV stands, right? If you have a hub and you also have that dock that works for the Switch as well, then people might say, you know what? Why do I need this 
uh, Roku, what do I need this, um, whatever, uh, Google, whatever, blah, blah, whatever TV thingy is called. But um, that's just something that I want to throw out there. Um, that I know that the current doc it is just the doc. It just it is just that. It just um, that's why I think they even have a little docs like this. You can just plug it in, and you don't even yeah. need the doc. But the next doc is expected to be hopefully if they go by the patent again. I don't know if they go by that. It just makes perfect sense for Nintendo to become an and enter- make it an entertainment hub for gaming and for streaming as well. So the, just just throwing out that out there, which is really spicy if you ask me. It's a pretty wise and spicy. <laughs> so I am hoping, and I'm actually kind of optimistic. Like we have a lot of really crazy ideas that we talk about on podcasts like this one, where it's just like, oh, would it be cool if they did this and if they did that? Yeah. And like those are like, oh, like dream come true type thing, <laughs> but not actually like something we're expecting. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily expecting this, but I wouldn't be surprised because Nintendo's whole thing is innovating. Mm-hmm. Like, innovating your gameplay experience. You look at the difference between an Xbox One and a Series X, and then you look at the difference between a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 5. The difference was big, but it was big quality of life differences. The functions of the system were basically the same. The menus of the system, the Xbox menu is the same, and PlayStation is almost identical between a PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 as far as like the operating system, how it works and whatnot. The mm-hmm. biggest differences are it's faster. You can have six different games loaded at once and start different ones without any like loading time and yada yada yada. Where Nintendo has always been like yo, we're going to drop a handheld with two screens. And then it's like, oh, yo, we're going to drop a home system that's like completely motion controlled. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, yo, you remember our two screen handheld? We're going to take that, but we're going to make it 3D. And so I feel like the general consensus is the Switch 2. Like we keep calling it a Switch 2. Mm -hmm. We're not calling it the next Nintendo system. We're Mm -hmm. all expecting an actual sequel system, something that functions relatively identical to the Switch. And so that's normally an iterative, iterative? Is that, how you, is that the right word, Mike? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's like an iterative type upgrade where it's like, oh, this part's improved, that part's improved. But that feels very un-Nintendo to me. And I feel like Nintendo Mm -hmm. has to look for one way that they can spice this thing up, whether it's the swivel or they have to throw something unconventional in there. There is. And so... There is that other patent for the the joysticks mm -hmm. to act like the triggers on the PS5. Yep. So so I feel like they're going to do like three or four things like that so we have the joystick we have this swivel thing potentially mm-hmm. on yep. the back and something that i've been thinking about is this new playstation portal you know how it's yeah. not a wireless playstation it's not a psp it literally lets your actual system do the heavy lifting and then just kind of like streams it to the system mm-hmm. in your hand yeah and that got me thinking the Wii U had so much cool stuff going for it underneath all of the like nonsense and having two screens, it functioned a lot like a 3DS. You had your handheld screen and then you had the screen on the TV. Uh, I remember playing Smash 4 and they had this cool option where you could use your 3DS as a controller. Mm-hmm. You had to have the game of Smash 4 in it but it wasn't like you were playing online in a lobby, like cross compatibility between the Wii U and the 3DS. Mm -hmm. The 3DS was registering as a controller. And so if we were to have uh, two different versions, because I don't think they would drop a pro necessarily, Mm -hmm. but uh, if we were to have kind of how we have the Switch Lite in the Switch, Mm -hmm. we have a Switch 2 Lite and a Switch 2. But the Switch 2 Lite, which is handheld only, you can also use that, if you would like, as a separate screen. You Mm -hmm. can stream to it, just like you stream from your PlayStation 5 to your portal. And so if you're able to use your Switch Lite as a screen for your Switch, now you have dual screen functionality. 
Mm. And so I could see there being, uh, cause we've heard rumors about that separate screen add on potentially. Yeah. But like, yeah. what if you don't need that add on? What if you can just use your switch, like your original Nintendo switch yeah. or your switch Lite to stream from the system as a secondary controller? You're talking, you're talking about the patent. There, there's a, there's a patent that yep. talks about, um, and they're basically streaming from the, from the actual, uh, system to the, to the, to the dock. So it actually makes sense. But I'm hybriding it with the OG mm -hmm. Switch. Yeah. So like yeah. you have a Switch currently, you could mm -hmm. use your Switch 1 as a controller or handheld version yeah. of yeah. the Switch 2. Because we already have cloud streaming. It'd basically be the same thing, but your yeah. cloud would be your Switch 2. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so yeah. that would allow different levels where you can have the light, which is just handheld, but then you can connect it to your dock, your hub or whatever, and stream from there. So I'm oh excited. <laughs> I mean, there's there's so many ways Nintendo can take this. You know, Nintendo um, is known for being they they're known for being very adventurous with with, with, with their systems, right? Um, one thing I would say is that this is not Nintendo from the past, right? This is not the same exact president that we've had. A uh, president that 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 is that loves development, who is very creative, right? Um, Iwata, right? Iwata was the president before the past. You no, know, may he rest in peace. Um, he um, he was a creative. He he loved uh, video games and he was a developer, right? Um, but the one we have now, he's a he's a, he's a numbers guy. He's a finance guy. Mm -hmm. I I I, um, I like the fact that we have a numbers guy in. And we're about to break the record for for most consoles sold, right? I think I think it's gonna happen. I think Nintendo Switch could easily reach 150, 160 million. You know, and I, I think it could easily happen this year. If we continue to push the, the switch this year, and Paul can tell me more about this a little, a little bit. Um, but um with Shintaro Furukawa, like I said, I compare him to Tim Cook from Apple, right? Mm -hmm. Under Tim Cook, uh, Apple became the first trillion dollar company. How did it, did they do that? Well, if you if you put iPhone iPhone well, let's say iPhone uh, iPhone 12, I think I don't know, actually Apple 11, iPhone 10, iPhone the iPhone 10 was the last one from Tim Cook. If you put iPhone 11, iPhone 12, iPhone 11 and like 10 and 10s next to each other, you won't tell the difference. But if you put iPhone first one and you put the, the 15 next to each other mm -hmm. wow that's a big difference but if you put them next to each other by generation there's you can hardly tell the difference but there is a difference there right i believe that that shintaro furukawa is the same way you you probably give us a console that looks and acts just like the switch and if you put them side by side there might be a chance that okay they look they both look the same because they might have a bigger screen on this one control is different on this one or whatever but they might look similar but in, in, in reality, it's it, 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 there is an upgrade in the newer one, right? And so this system has proven to have really great sales and and to and to and to be successful in the market because people love to take their system with them, and mm -hmm. they, you know at home, why not follow that same trajectory, right? And I feel like like he has that same mentality, numbers, mm -hmm. and and I, that's why I feel like I, I feel good about the next switch because if if there's anything like like um, what Apple is doing with their their, their iPhones. Nintendo, I mean, Nintendo can literally, you know, skyrocket <laughs> to, to to into another realm. Look what they're doing now, you know, with the, under this president. Super Nintendo World, you know, the movies, everything. They're expanding like crazy because what he's doing is securing Nintendo's future as a brand. Let's say, no, this is never gonna happen. Okay, never gonna happen. You know, Nintendo <laughs> stops making consoles, right? They still have Hollywood. They still have the theme parks, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and so it's like, it's like there's <coughs> for success and for longevity within the company. All right, you're right, Paul. Sorry, I thought I muted it and I was just a little bit off, so didn't mean a, a cough to the microphone. You're good, man. You're good. You're good. Uh, Paul, anything? What? Um, I have a little cough. Sorry. You have the latest numbers uh, for Nintendo so far? Like from Famitsu sales. Ah uh, yeah, for for systems. Oh, oh, uh, we they will report soon. One hundred forty-one million. So okay. that that's unofficial, but they were on the path to 
hitting uh, their projection a little bit earlier. So they they gave themselves, you know, a full three months to do the 1.5 million. And then that 1.5 million was actually achieved like within around the time that Princess Peach Showtime came out. So within those last two weeks, you'll see something closer to like 1.76 or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the sales are exactly, but it should be around 141 million from the previous 139.36. That's a lot. That's staggering. <laughs> it is a lot. It is a lot. It's, it's crazy. I mean, you know, um, Nintendo is, is, I think Nintendo is on, on the right track. You know, I think that they're happy already. I think they're, they're, they're happy with, with, with Nintendo's success, you know, and, and they're taking their time. <laughs> they're, they're taking their time for the next one. It, we are about uh, about 15 minutes to 20. Well, we got about 20 minutes left. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the Q&A, right? Let's start the Q&A. Sounds good. Hey, shout out to our audience. We just hit 60 likes. Thank you guys uh, so much. Okay. And on YouTube, 60 awesome. likes on YouTube, on my awesome. YouTube channel. And that seriously, you know, helps so much. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. really appreciate it. And we have uh, 45. Right now, we have 110 watchers across all uh, networks. We have... Uh, at the mic, honestly, we have Lily Hyrule. We got that Paul Gale Network. We have uh, at uh, another Twitter. We got Facebook. Uh, it's, I'm, it's in, my camera's in the middle. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. I do that too. <laughs> yeah, between, between the between all three channels we're streaming on, we have 113 now. So thank you guys. You guys have been amazing. Um, go oh, ahead. I get. Oh, sorry. I yeah, keep doing that. Like it's. You're good. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I just, can I give a quick uh, update about what I'm doing tonight to our watchers? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm doing, uh, starting tonight, I am streaming Smash Bros on my YouTube channel after mm -hmm. the podcast ends. I'm calling it the, the Topics Post Podcast Party. Yeah. So that is starting whenever we finish here. I'm going to jump into Smash. So I would love nice. to hang out with whoever's still here. Sounds good. Uh, and then, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead. Make sure um, from I'm going to start reading from now because I know this is questions. There, there, there are questions from there are questions from the, from from a, from, be, from before. So if you have a question, can you write it again? That way we can go ahead and start from the bottom. From the bottom. Now, that way we know we're not looking for the questions all over the chat, and we know the questions. So go ahead and at uh, Mike Odyssey, um, and then we we I'll go ahead and highlight those questions. So that we can go ahead and answer them. And if you if you have a question for anybody in particular, you can still add my quality that way that the comment is highlighted. And then question four, and then you ask a question or a question for the group, question for anybody's particular. Okay. I think we have one here. Uh I saw it. I just saw it as I was talking. Let's see here. Um at, oh, that's not it. Um Okay, can anyone can can whoever posted the question go ahead and post it again? That way I can I can actually see it from the bottom. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Sounds familiar. Where's where that from? Uh, <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking. <laughs> what? That's from the 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 song "Started from the Bottom" by Drake. When your hair's done, when your nails done. When Started your, from the bottom, <laughs> now we're here. When your nail. When your nail is what? hair's done, nails done, everything did. <laughs> I'm not singing it for for the reason so that your stream doesn't get. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't don't no no familiar with the song. No familiar. All right, Zach, let's start singing to get this uh, thing copyrighted right now. <laughs> no, <I'm> just... Let's go. <laughs> <sighs> No, uh, uh, I'm not sure if the chat heard us because they're too busy like adding each other and everything. I'm like, all right, if y'all, <laughs> okay, we, we got one, we got one. If you guys have any questions, make sure just like this one at my Odyssey and then ask your question. That way we can see it. Uh, welcome, AB James. Welcome, AB James. All right, so first question here by Dr. Marvin uh, Van Nostrand it says, uh, "Do you think Nintendo will cease production of on current Switch models?" Or do you or do a price drop on them when the new one is released? Um, I do believe that eventually Nintendo will cease production of the system. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I think I think they've already started to believe to begin. I, I think they've already kind of dwindled down production, and I think they're just trying to get rid of the stock they have right now. 
Um, uh, that was one of the leaks. I'm, all, I'm now I'm gonna do my quotes every time I say leaks or or rumors, right? Because that way it's not coming from me; it's coming from somebody else. Quotation marks. <laughs> and uh, that was one of the leaks that we heard um, that Nintendo is just kind of one of the reasons for the delay. Reasons for the delay um, is that they have a big stock uh, stock they need to get rid of. And so they're trying to get rid of the stock um, before they get into the next system. So if they're trying to get rid of the stock, that kind of tells you that they kind of halted in making more, you know? Um, and they're right now they're in, currently in production of the next system. They're trying to make as many as they can. Um, mm -hmm. Last report was like they're, they're they're trying to have 10 million units by 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 the drop date. So that's how, that makes it good that you get one instead of having to have a scopper you know steal from you so i i personally think nintendo's done with the switch production i think they they're getting rid of stock and i think they're currently producing the switch too uh anybody want to jump in um not done producing. i <laughs> i would i would say that i agree um I, not specifically they're they're like uh cutting production just cold turkey they're kind of slowly getting into it uh -huh. um but what i if i would speculate something in terms of um mm -hmm. the price drop because the nintendo switch was delayed uh because we were kind of expecting it this year um yeah. just as they did with um when they launched tears of the kingdom they they set up a sale a very short very limited sale for breath of the wild which you know if you have never played breath of the wild that was your opportunity for you to buy it mm -hmm. so i don't really think that nintendo will drop the like the price and keep it uh, like that for a very long time so um, if they were to do a price drop on the nintendo switch once once they announce the nintendo switch 2 it'll be for a very small percentage but it's mm -hmm. going to be a good percentage um, and it's going to be for a very short time. So if that were to happen, be ready. So, yeah, that, that'll be my take on that. Yeah. Or I, I would say, because um, I didn't answer that part of the question, but I would say they're more, yeah. most likely to give you games, free games, and, and add it to the console with the console than to actually drop the price. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> well, okay. They're, they're, still, they're, they're still selling games on the console like, like nothing, right? I'm like, okay, uh, well, we'll do it this time. Instead of dropping the price, we'll just add the game free game right get, uh, choose your game with the mario kart uh mario odyssey or um, mario maker right you know and, and and then you know that's the their their price drop kind of uh, thing like adding games to it that could be their response for a price yeah. drop yeah yeah okay oh, what do you think? i don't think they're done producing nintendo switch units yet uh a while ago on twitter slash x i put up this chart and mm -hmm. I was trying to find it right now while we were while we were talking, listening mm -hmm. to you speak, rather. Um, and I couldn't find it off the top of, you know, I couldn't find it right now, but off the top mm -hmm. of my head, roughly. With the exception of Wii U, kind of, every Nintendo system has sold millions into its successor's life. After the 3DS came out, you look at the old Nintendo DS sales, it still sold several million more units for mm -hmm. a few years. And then those numbers started to trickle, 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 trickle. But, you know, for years afterwards, it continued to sell. For several years after the Nintendo Switch came out, the Nintendo 3DS continued to sell a few million copies. Mm -hmm. In fact, this week was the first week after I think 685 weeks that Famitsu finally stopped tracking individual weekly sales of the 3DS in Japan. And you're like, wait a minute, really? All this time? Yeah, it wasn't moving anything impressive. And Nintendo actually stopped creating new 3DS machines a couple of years ago, but those were still on store shelves. But even when they stopped making them, that was still a few years into the Nintendo Switch's life, mm -hmm. you know? Um, we sold another five or so million into Wii U's life. GameCube still sold into Wii's life. Like, not a whole lot, but Nintendo has the ability to find a different audience, you know? Um, 
that is still interested in the former system and they could either price drop it, which I do like the idea of a price drop, mm -hmm. especially if Nintendo Switch 2 is out. You know, yeah. can you just imagine a $100 Nintendo Switch Lite out there? Yeah. Wow. Who wouldn't buy that? And if someone says, dude, that's unrealistic, that's never going to happen. Nine years after PlayStation 2 came out, which was three years into PlayStation 3's life, Sony dropped the $300 PS2 eventually down to $100. Bucks. Mm. Things do drop after time. Parts become cheaper. They become, you know, easier to make, easier to produce, easier to put in there. And then you're appealing to two different demographics. Positive word of mouth still keeps an old system attractive because it still offers something different and something good enough that the cutting edge new people don't need anymore. But the certain people don't need the cutting edge and they're just happy with an entry point level platform. Yeah. What doesn't happen is people flocking to a system when it doesn't have a good ecosystem anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, when people stop talking about it because the developer stops publishing, uh, starts you know, stops supporting that system, that's when the sales aren't that hot. And some Nintendo systems haven't sold as well as others when the successor came out, but all of them did. And I said, with exception of Wii U, to be fair, Wii U still sold a little bit more into Nintendo Switch's life, just really not much, not in the, not in the millions like some of these other ones. So I think if we get to a point, well, we will eventually get to a point where Nintendo Switch 2 is out, I mm -hmm. think the base switch drops. But what Mike said, I also think is going to happen before Nintendo Switch 2 comes out. And that is some kind of new, attractive, possibly permanent um, bundle where mm -hmm. maybe Nintendo doesn't outright drop the price of the system, but mm -hmm. it's a, you know, a, a clever way of a price drop. And that is a, a two game bundle, a hundred dollar value or something like that in with Nintendo Switch all the time and that's what you get when you spend your 300 bucks you get nintendo switch and i don't know mario kart 8 deluxe and super mario odyssey or something like that that's a pretty good way to do it and you could also then say we do count those software sales because what we actually did was price drop the hardware mm. you know what i mean or you could say oh no we're counting the hardware sales because we made the games free or, or in reality, it's a combination of, of both happening. You know what I mean? So uh, that's that's my multi-tiered answer to that. Price drop eventually, mm -hmm. but probably some kind of attractive bundle before then. Um, well, at least my thought. Could be wrong, but... Yeah. So. I, I thought you, you made me, you made me uh, go look on eBay when you said that the 3DS was being um, so sold new um, in Japan. And I'm like, new 3DS, brand new. And all of the new ones sealed come from Japan. Brand new. So yeah. there is still a chance that they to buy a brand new sealed in box Nintendo 3DS. It's in almost any edition, because I'm, I'm looking at a whole bunch of editions here. Uh, <laughs> Zelda. That's crazy, but awesome. yeah. Up, yeah. Up until last week. Now, that doesn't mean that you still can't go to Japan right now and find one in stores that's new. Mm -hmm. But Famitsu has finally decided to finally stop tracking it because yeah. mm -hmm. it's just been this was a recent tweet that i put up so i could find this one a lot quicker than the other thing yeah i was right 685 weeks 13 years of the system still selling new units at the mitsu tracking them that's, that's insane nintendo. that's nintendo okay. i i have just been cracking up because when you were talking about the number selling you like triggered a memory from last uh, September, uh, September 2023. Mm -hmm. A Wii U sold like from a store in America. Oh yeah, I just, yeah. just yeah. remember that random sales. Yeah, number. it was like I I the first. It was the first one since like 2022 or something. Oh my gosh, like yeah, <laughs> man, that's no, yeah, I remember. I remember that too. I forgot what store it was, but it was like, yeah, some. Uh, I remember. Uh, yeah, right. but yeah, right. I pretty much agree with you. So funny. I don't need to say anything other than the the random what? Wii U selling last year <laughs> is my contribution to that. That's hilarious. I mean, right now, just a uh, just a little um, shout out. We have 120 people across all platforms uh, watching us right now. So thank you so much for 
for being with us on a Friday night. You could do, you could be doing anything else, watching the movie popcorn. You know, you know what? Let me stop giving you ideas. He'll <laughs> leave. But thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, right now, we are in a Q and A part. So go ahead and ask Mike all in the chat, and I can highlight your comments, and uh, then we'll answer it to the best of our abilities, right? Because some comments, um, some questions require a little bit of speculation, a little bit of thought process, right? Mm -hmm. And but we'll answer them anyway, and we'll give you our opinions. If we know, you know, you know I, I don't know much, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I will try. And they've gotten us to almost 70 likes on YouTube. So nice. That's that was, that's we said 60 just a couple of minutes ago. I, so yeah, guys, already. I, I, think we, I think we can get to 100 before the, the stream ends. I, I, I believe in us. I believe in the chat. We can Easy, do it. right? Yeah. All right. So next question comes to Alice. I love Mike Odyssey and crew. Every year Nintendo releases a Zelda game. What do you think we will get uh, this year? I really hope to get Wind Waker and T, which is Twilight Princess. What do you guys think? I want to go with Lily from Hyrule because she's in Hyrule already, so might as well. Well, it's just that I'm going to be biased. I'm going to go with Twilight Princess and Wind yeah. Waker 100%. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I, I feel like um, I read a comment uh, here on the chat, and uh, I know that this is also something that happens to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Not everybody loved the Wind Waker, but... Um, let me tell you this, give that game an opportunity, give that game a chance. It's a wonderful game. But um, to that point, um, it'll be, I mean, hopefully that's going to be the case. Like, uh, if they can bundle them, that'll be great. Because that way people will buy the bundle, just as they did with the, with Mario. You know, we got the uh, 3D All-Stars together yeah. and everything. That'll mm -hmm. be nice. That way people can get into, you know, playing the Wayne Waker and giving, giving that beautiful game an opportunity. Uh, because if they announce Twilight Princess, it's going to go, like, selling like crazy. Because I know that for a fact a lot of people loved and that until this day is one of the favorite, uh, you know, out there. Not mine unfortunately but I, I love twilight princess but it's still not my favorite one um but yeah it'll be something like that now i don't really think that they're gonna do a remake um i mean this year i doubt it like if what they did what they did with link's awakening sounds more vi like um um happening but not for twilight princess and Wind waker probably for another title and probably for another year so mm -hmm. let's hope that's gonna be the case It'd be cool. They got we got like a Triforce, like a Triforce pack. We got mm -hmm. yeah. Waker, we got Wind Waker, we got Twilight Princess, and then we get another one. I don't know what's going on. I mean, any other game? It'd be a um a remake of some some sort or an anniversary edition of some sort. I don't know. But it'd be cool. We get like a Triforce kind of pack. I I agree. What do you guys think? Yeah, you know, I'm very hopeful and optimistic that that trend is not going to break. Uh, I don't know if it's a pack, if it's a collection, or if it's going to be a Link's Awakening type remaster mm -hmm. or remake. You know, kind of like we saw with uh, Mario Wonder, like you referenced earlier. No one knew that was a thing. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, and you know, the leakers leaked it like three days before the direct. Mm -hmm. You know, like no one knew that that was a thing until they were ready to show us. And so I'm very optimistic that the same type of thing is happening with something Zelda related mm -hmm. and that we will get some sort of uh, I feel like I'd rather have another Link's Awakening type remake than that would be amazing yeah for sure yeah I think if we do get enough uh, if we get a remake let's say of Ocarina of Time that's not gonna be Switch it's gonna be Switch 2 probably Switch 2 that game is too big uh, uh, get a remake and then to be on Switch at the end of its life, I, I don't think it's going to come to Switch. I think it's going to be Switch 2. I, I think that if we do get a remake of maybe a, of Oracle Seasons, Oracle's Ages, or even even Link, Link to the Past, um, in the form of, of Link's Awakening, that will be good, right? Like mm -hmm. a little, little game like that. I oh, could see... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I feel like I have like some sort of lag because I've done that like four times. What you're doing is, is actually... Done. What you're doing is actually kind of um, fulfilling prophecy because i was about to go back to you okay I, <laughs> I could see i know we've talked about and i was on the same page as you last week mm -hmm. that i wouldn't see uh, ocarina of time remake coming to the switch mm -hmm. however 
I've slightly changed my stance on that because I feel like what we've talked about with the library, if you get it on one system, you get it on both mm -hmm. type thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, and right. so I could see that being a selling point where it's like, hey, it's, you know, it's 1080 on the mm -hmm. Switch, mm -hmm. but it's 4K on the Switch too. And so that way it's not, uh, they're not cannibalizing each other's sales. Like you have just yeah. as good a reason. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford a Switch 2, you're still going to buy games and give them money. And yeah. then yep. when you're ready to go to this, you have an incentive to go to the Switch 2 because it's like, but I want to play Ocarina in 4K. Yeah, and uh, almost like that, like PlayStation did. Like I, I was holding back on the PlayStation for a very long time because I was like, there's nothing for the PlayStation that actually gets me there. But they were selling their uh, titles with PlayStation 4 um, with an, a, a, an upgrade. Like as soon as you get the PlayStation 5, you'll be able to upgrade it for, for, for PlayStation 5, which I think is great. So if yeah, they do something yeah. like that, it'll be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. All right, take your six cents as uh, could Nintendo give us a release month and a code name for Switch 2 at the earnings meeting. Hey, everything is possible, right? I mean, I, I, I do believe that we are in Nintendo Switch 2 fiscal year, meaning we've entered, this is the first month of Nintendo's brand new fiscal year, and I think that this, this fiscal year, we will hear from Switch 2. So if Nintendo is going to hint at this fiscal year I, I, to their to their, um, you know, financial backing, you know, people, then, you know, they are gonna, I don't know, you know, it, 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 it's possible. We can get a code name. After the code name, we can we get a trailer, like a, that teaser trailer. After the teaser trailer, we, we'll get the event and then we'll get the release. And that could be in, in, in that order, right? <coughs> Nintendo's big on, on, on code names, right, Paul? Nintendo, yeah. I mean, Dolphin with GameCube, um, Project Cafe with Wii U, NX with Nintendo Switch, mm -hmm. a Revolution with Wii, um, not that, oh, Project Dream with N64. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that itself is like literally the, you know, I mean, I, I, I can't go back to maybe, maybe Paul remembers and, and uh, Super Nintendo and Nintendo codes, but we, I think we were too, too young for that. But, um, if they did, they probably did have a code back then, or maybe because they didn't, because it was the '80s and they were they were actually in the middle of the gaming revolution, you know. Um, but more than not, they've had a code for their yeah. for their systems, and so there is a possibility that we could get another code this year too. So I wouldn't I wouldn't rule it out. What do you guys think, uh, Lily and uh, Mr. Zachary? Definitely. Yeah, you know, especially with their new president being a numbers guy, like you were talking mm -hmm. about, uh, I could see that being more likely than in the past for them to just straight up tell their investors around what time this will be dropping. Big question, without thinking, I'm going to give you two seconds to come up with the code name. Zach, go ahead. One. Firebird. All right, so uh, Nintendo, uh, Fire, code Firebird. Uh, same thing, Lily. Lily. And I'm terrible with names. I'm sorry. I I am terrible. With Just names. make up anything, anything for for, for what do you um, think the name gonna be? Rocket. You have Fuego Coco right next to you. <laughs> Fue Coco. Yeah, Fue Coco. I don't think they're gonna go with a Pokemon game name, but yeah, um, yeah. I'll I'll go. Oh, I just killed my Fue Coco. Oh no, he's he's gone. He's oh, he's dead. fine. He's fine. Uh, I said I said Rocket. I don't know why. Okay, Rocket. Rocket. That right, was the right. first thing that came into my that popped into my head. So. <laughs> What do you think, Paul? T O O two two for yeah. for Switch two. I'm gonna because go because yeah because it's two as in it's also in development. It uh, also plays Nintendo Switch games. It is the Nintendo Switch also. That's good. that's good. Right, you're right. It's good. That's good. I mean, in a way, in a way, an X Nintendo X is also like another word for like Switch to kind of like you know kind of like so we didn't get that at the time, but now we get it. So I'm gonna say I figured it just stood for next. Yeah, like it's the next yeah, one. That, that's probably it. I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> we are making stuff up. Here. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna pick uh, the Nintendo. The Nintendo. I, I, I'm stuck between swivel. Oh yeah, because the button. Code yeah. swivel, or or um. Hmm. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll just go with swivel. What's well? That's the code name for the next switch. 
Uh, we're working on, on Code Swivel. <laughs> horrible. That is horrible. All right, let's go here. Uh, we got a couple more questions to go. Uh, do you think the leak Nintendo selects games for cheap is true? Uh, for games mm-hmm. like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Metroid Dread, etc.? Wait, when, when, when was this leak? When, when did this happen? Let me go look it up. Is that, I'm, I'm going to hear about it. While you are looking it up, I will say yes, I do. Because I feel like Metroid Dread is a very strange inclusion if this is fake. Because it's Metroid Dread is relatively new to mm-hmm. be a ultra cheap selects game. But if you're building hype for a new Metroid Prime, yeah, then getting more people into Metroid at a cheaper price makes sense. Mm-hmm. And All so... Right. That is why I believe this is true. Okay, just, so we'll, we'll, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Lily. Just like they did with um, again, Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. So yeah, okay. that sounds something that might happen. All right, so yeah, I found it right away. It has to do with um, when Nintendo started removing um, um, some games, and there is a list of games that that because Nintendo was mo- removing I think the physical copies of these games mm-hmm. um, the rumor was that they were they were to become selects and then we have Paper Mario, Origami King, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Pikmin 3 Metroid Dread, Kirby Star Allies, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Super Mario Bros. U Fire Emblem Three Houses, Fire Emblem Engage um, Yoshi's Crafted World WarioWare Get It Together which is a new game you know it's pretty, you know it, Couple of months old. Nintendo Switch Sports, Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, Mario Maker 2, and Mario Strikers Battle League. So those are the games that were removed from physical sales. And so that's what led to the leak of them becoming selects. Um hey, never you never know. That could be true. Could happen. What do you think, Paul? I I think it's coming. I think it, just like the price drop. That's how you elongate the Nintendo Switch life cycle by having a Nintendo Selects or a Nintendo Player's Choice or a Switch Selects line because it keeps the system vibrant. And it's happening this late in. They haven't done that yet. That's just going to be a jolt of energy mm-hmm. to you know, reinvigorate some sales. Nobody wants to buy into an ecosystem that's dead just because a new because a new shiny pretty toy is out but if they could keep the old one thriving in a way by new nintendo switch online games a price drop for older hardware or a price drop for you know nintendo selects and that that's going to keep it vibrant enough and you know yeah it, it, i think it'll happen that's that exact list possibly but something will okay so we're gonna go ahead and and, and read uh, these two last comments from Joycey. And Joycey is our co-host. She has a really good insight here. Um, there's a um, here uh, is another POV. Uh, give the people what they want. Pack Switch Two with as many power as much power as possible. Keep making AAA games, and then collect them all. Collect all third-party games, and then she continues to say, "Now is the best time to strike capitalize on the success of the original Switch, and we will." We will pay for it because it will be worth it. And I 100% agree. I think Nintendo should capitalize on the success of Switch, Switch 2. Give a more powerful system. Don't go crazy inventing something completely new that people won't know or get confused about. Just keep it simple. Keep it straightforward. And keep it powerful. Cass agrees? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's tired. I do. <laughs> All right. So, uh, wait. This is this is a this is a good question here, real quick. Uh, when is Nintendo sixty four Switch Online games updates will be? Well, right now we just had an update for any Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. There's two games added. So Nintendo is. I, I think we had two sixty four games added last month. Am I mistaken? I'm mistaken. Um, two Nintendo sixty four games. But um, Nintendo does they, for online games for NSO right now. They just do them wherever they drop them wherever. Um, they used to do them once a month, and <clears> then <throat> they, they kind of slowed down because now we have so many games that they they could now take their time and and select you know prior um, games you know little by little, right? 
But um, I think Nintendo is is always updating NSO. When is the next 64 um, mm-hmm. NSO update? Nobody knows, but Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. And with that, my friends, we have hit the two-hour mark. This is the time of the podcast where we introduce this, the cast, the all-star cast once again, let you know where you can find them and what they have doing. Uh, what 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 is going on in their in in their corner of the YouTuber YouTubers, and then uh, you know so you guys can go ahead and follow them wherever they they may find you may find them and, and yeah let's go ahead and start with Lily from Haru. Where can we find you? Uh, thank you, Mike. Well, uh, you can find me everywhere. It's Lily Hyrule. Um, pretty much, yeah, everywhere. But here on YouTube, um, whoever is watching this on my channel, this is going to be a new thing. So um, it's kind of it's it's going to be a little bit, you know. Uh, you will need to adjust to it, but yes, you can also watch mm-hmm. it here on Mike's Odyssey uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, I am slowly getting back to my regular schedule, um, but um, you will find um, new content on my YouTube channel, spe- especially for the Nintendo Weekly. Now that I set up my new uh, prompter, so we're going to have more about that soon. I also, I am currently working on other videos, not just uh, news, of course, and my Zelda uh, marathon is still ongoing on my channel and yeah other things that i'm doing on social media of course like instagram has a little bit more like different kind of content to reels and other stuff there you'll be able to find it there but thank you so much that's pretty much it that is awesome let's move it over to zach the man hendrix i was in the, I, I couldn't i couldn't think of a word yeah started. i don't know you said the man so i was like all right like let's man, do it <laughs> oh man man anyways that was weird uh <laughs> So also too, quick shout out to Lily because that last question that somebody asked about Nintendo Switch online updates, Lily posts those. I just saw that post, like uh, you linked to your website earlier. Right. Where she like does a little write up about the games that are coming up are mm-hmm. coming out and shares them. So Thank she God. would actually be a great source mm-hmm. for that type of question. Thank you. Uh, yeah. But you can find me on Twitter slash, oh, it's on this side, Twitter slash X at Zach, uh, Young Calf Zach. Everywhere else, Zach Hendricks Media, Zach Hendricks Voiceovers, they'll both bring you to my Instagram, my YouTube, and whatnot. And speaking of my YouTube, I am streaming Smash as soon as this stream concludes. Mm-hmm. My stream's actually live, just sharing the podcast right now. Yeah. So with that said, you can find me there in a couple minutes <laughs> and then let's take it over to nintendo's uh favorite son uh mr miyamoto's cousin paul gill network paul, what do you have going on and where can we find you i just theorized a little something with a small tease it could mean absolutely nothing but I noticed a few days ago that John Cena put up a random picture of Link uh, on yeah, his Instagram. Right. But that is what John does. He likes to just put up random photos without any kind of context and allow the audience to infer what they speculate want. Mm-hmm. And yeah. But the thing is, I was like, you know what? When I played Nintendo Switch, specifically Breath of the Wild and 1 2 Switch with John Cena back in 2017 mm-hmm. for the Nintendo commercial shoot. I talked to him, and he is a Nintendo fan, a bit of an older school Nintendo fan, but he likes Legend of Zelda. What are you he about to the... say, Paul? <laughs> well, no, I, I was just being uh, as like... confirmed. What if he did this because he's actually involved in the Zelda movie? <gasps> so it was just a funny little thought. Like, in some capacity, he likes to share random things. Sometimes they have <coughs> a, a meaning. Well, they always have a meaning. But yeah. sometimes they might have a deeper meaning and other times not. So John Cena Twitter. We're gonna put a poll. <laughs> we're gonna put a poll out and see. Would you rather have him as a Goron or as Ganondorf? <laughs> well, that's what I have you on Twitter and X. And um, I'm, 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 I'm working on, I'm working on rating um rating um Zach right here. Zach, can you post your link in the, in the private chat so I can kind and copy it? Oh, man. Yes, I can. Um, the other so, part of the question and at Paul Gill Network on YouTube. Listen, listen. To add to that, to what Paul is saying, I I can confirm 
from a source that they um, are in pre-production right now. I know we were waiting on on on, on um, the director to finish um, Planet of the Apes and stuff like that. Planet of the Apes has been finished and it's out next month. All right, yep. and so he has already transitioned to the Legend of Zelda movie. Okay, they are in pre-production. They are, they they they're doing this. The scouting is going on as we speak. Scouting is looking lo- lo- shooting locations, right? And so they do scouting and they they do um, the shooting locations and they they do the casting around the same exact time. Um, so right now they could be casting for the Legend of Zelda movie. We might see uh, a presentation very soon. Hey hey, who knows? We might get John Cena as Ganondorf or Tingle. So, <laughs> amazing. Uh, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna have something like a uh, you know a Zelda direct or something. <clears throat> Excuse me, a Zelda direct or something where they're gonna be showing like not a teaser, but at least sharing information and being very transparent about the Zelda movie, just yeah. as they did with the Super Mario Bros. movie. So yeah. Suntendo so, guy said something, and I'm gonna add one more to Suntendo uh, guy's post. The Rock as Link, John Cena as Ganondorf, and Dave Bautista as Princess Zelda. <laughs> and you have the three former wrestlers that made it Hollywood representing the, the Triforce. Um, um, Wait, the, the Rock as Link? That's the one that shocks you, not Dave Bautista. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just Wait, wait, wait on I can see Dave Bautista I can as see Princess Zelda, but hold it back, Paul. Wait, 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 Blonde on. wig on him, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, I, I didn't catch the rest. So the Rock as Link, Dave Batista as Zelda. No, I'm, so, okay, I'm just messing. <laughs> Santendo guys said jokingly, I'm assuming the Rock as Link, John Cena as Ganondorf. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna say Di- Dave Batista as Zelda. Hey, uh, uh, Zach, check out the ch- check out Discord real quick. Oh, coo, coo. oh my gosh. I don't know. I'm very nervous for the for the movie. I have to say, I, I I'm happy. I'm happy. I I, I I don't know. I'm excited about that movie. I, I I think for the first time, I was more scared about the Mario movie than the Zelda movie. I think I have more. I feel I feel better about the Mario movie now that I've seen the Zelda. I, I mean, Zelda movie, yeah, now yeah. The Mario movie, because I can trust Miyamoto, right? I think he's, of course we can trust trust him. He, but... He's way too jealous with his own his own um. IP I see that. He, yeah. he's not gonna let anything out of the ordinary or have Hollywood Hollywood eyes a movie, you know, like they did Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> that was that was a disaster. Oh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> that that never <laughs> happened. That, that's just. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that was just crazy. But anyway, you can find me here at the Odyssey every single day until I announced. The Mike Odyssey show. I've been. Uh, I'll be doing videos every, almost every day about news, right? Mostly just trending topics. I know I, I used to do multiple topics. I'm doing one topic video so that I can, we can have more time uh, of, of, for discussion. Today's video did pretty well. Eighteen thousand views. That's pretty okay. I never. I never passed six thousand or seven thousand, but eighteen thousand is not bad. Um, on the Nintendo Direct, and so I do videos basically just like that for now. But I'm working on the Mike Odyssey show, which is going to be a variety show um, concentrated on Nintendo, variety, entertainment, and comedy. So I want to make you guys laugh a little bit. You want to know just a little bit of what's coming in the show? Watch today's, today's video. The very beginning of it. <laughs> just the very beginning of it. This will be more, more of that comedy and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, other than that, you can catch us here. The entire crew, Lily, Paul, Zach. Joycey and I here at the Tommy Podcast every single Friday night live. We'll be the we'll be that cherry on top of your weekend, right? It's your yes. weekend Sunday, and and try to make you know you had a long week of work and you want to sit back, relax with your cup of tea, cup of coffee, and the Tommy Podcast on screen. That's where we come in and to try to you know you know put that just little period at the end of the sentence, and you can have a you know. You know, ended in a good note, right? Here at the Intelli Podcast. So we appreciate and we love everyone who made it to the stream today. Right after this, we have the host after 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 show. I don't know what to call it. After after after, after podcast show. party. 
the the post podcast party over at the Zach Hendricks channel. I'm trying to figure out how to wait how how to uh Oh, I I gave you the permission. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me go ahead and then uh do Which that I think that would be on by default. Right? Right? I th I think you have to turn it on on your side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um let's see here. That one there. Two. No. Less, more, maybe. <laughs> so uh, no. I'm actually re literally reading. It says show less, show more. <laughs> uh, tags, or am I? That is not it. Hmm. Customize. No, that's not it either. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put this to here. Put that there. And uh, it's still, uh, I think uh, it says here. It's still still giving the same message. I don't know why. Let me refresh my page first. If I can. Mine, I guess too. That, that. All right. All right. Got it. Okay. That there. That there. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Good old YouTube. Mm. Trying to figure things uh, out as you go. Hold up! I found it. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I found it. Okay. Yay! On that side it's saved. I found it. I found it. He I found it, it, guys. I found it. I did it. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. All right, guys. So with that said, thank you so much for being here. You guys have been amazing and are amazing. We will see you back here at the Nintendo Podcast next Friday. Same hour, same time, same channel, with the same heart and attitude. But before we let you go, we have two things we need to let you know. Number one, Paul. Oh. Never give up. Don't do it. It's not. It's not the best thing to do. Because when you give up the first time, it comes up to it, it develops into a habit. It becomes a habit. You always end up giving up when things are too hard. So, don't do it. Stop. You know you. You. I'm watching you. Don't. Don't. Don't give up. And Lily. And be kind. <laughs> very, very, very close. <laughs> Zagger, my no, I have to, I have really I really really need to study that part because yeah be kind um, be kind be kind be kind rewind rewind <laughs> I rewind and uh, Zach take it over journey on my wayward son journey on <laughs> <laughs> and journey well let me let me cut this music on off because the music background is kind of interfering with my with with, with, with my pot. This is the music we need. Oh, that's not the music. What is this? That's not it. Hold up. That's not the one. That's not it either. Hold up. What? What? What's wrong my book? <laughs> I did not know this was here. Okay. Let me <laughs> now you're interesting. Wait, hold up. Is that, is that my voice? Is that my voice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good old Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. Wait. I thought I'd turn it off. It's still on. I get it. What? <laughs> How do you turn it off? Name topic podcast. <laughs> I, 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 I need to turn this off first. Hold up. Hello. Oh yes, I'm hey. back. You're back. How about this one. No. No. Hmm. I have echo now. <laughs> My voice. <laughs> this one. Well. That one now. I'll try all of them. <laughs> there we go. I found it. With Paul Gale, Lily Hyrule, Zach, Joycey J, and Mike Odyssey. That's him. Hi. We got to do it again because uh, Lily got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dance, dance. Topic podcast. Have to end in jazz hand. If not, the, the, the algorithm will not accept it. <laughs> Three, two, one. Jazz hand. <laughs> now. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone. Be, good, be nice. Make good choices. And, you know, and uh, yeah, be nice to people. Yeah. Uh, I think Zach is frozen. Yep. <laughs> He's frozen.